Rene was given a full update, including the much-fabricated details of Bella's accident, at the end of which I made a show of stretching and slowly opening my eyes. I'd like to introduce you to my son. Edward, Carlyle said with a warm smile. Very nice to finally meet you. Bella talks about you all the time. I said as I walked over to her. Aha, uh -huh, she said, her eyes narrowing. Carlyle cleared his throat and I watched her expression slowly transform. I could tell it was a struggle, but her eyes softened and she said. Pleased to meet you. After Carlyle and the doctor left, she watched me carefully for a long time before returning her gaze to Bella. I wondered if I should say something, but decided it was best to let her speak first. Besides, I was in no particular hurry. It wasn't going to be a pleasant conversation. The minutes passed in uncomfortable silence, until finally she spoke. So, you followed her here. She asked without looking at me. Yes. She left rather abruptly and I was worried about her. She wouldn't answer her phone and I wanted to make sure she was okay, you know, when a girl leaves you and then doesn't take your calls, that usually means they don't want to talk to you. She said dryly, glancing up at me. I understand that. I answered as calmly as I could, reminding myself of the need to keep everything about our ruse believable. However I also know her reasons for leaving were made very spur of the moment, and I was hoping that given some time to think, she might be willing to reconsider, Charlie said she left because she was starting to get too attached. To and she was afraid she'd end up stuck in forks. She told him she hated it there. She really hurt him and it just isn't like her to say something so hurtful. I want to know why, she was afraid. I said simply, happy that at least one statement was true. Everyone gets scared sometimes, frightened by their own feelings and emotions. She left so quickly and, as you said, her actions were very unlike her. That's why I was hopeful I would be able to convince her to come home, home, she asked, her voice skeptical. Yes. I believe Bella considers Forks to be her home now, you still think that, after everything that's happened, I'd like to. Although of course I will understand if Bella has truly made up her mind to leave. We, didn't really get a chance to talk, so all I can do is hope, Renee watched me silently, and her thoughts were jumping around so quickly it was hard to discern what she was thinking. 158, she really means a lot to you. Doesn't she? She finally asked. More than anything in the world. I told her truthfully, hoping it wasn't a little too much truth for a first meeting. I really wished we'd been able to be properly introduced by Bella, and under considerably better circumstances. There was another long silence, though this one wasn't as uncomfortable as the first had been. You're staying. She eventually asked. It didn't really sound like a question, but I nodded and she nodded in return. Renee stayed in the room all day, and after our initial conversation she made no more effort to talk to me. When she started to yawn. I motioned for her to take the recliner at the end of the bed, explaining that the plastic chair was fine for me. She scrutinized me for several seconds, but exhaustion must have won the battle because she made her way across the room and leaned it all the way back. As it turned out, Renee talked in her sleep almost as much as Bella. I felt guilty for listening to her, but I'd promised Bella I wouldn't leave and I wasn't about to break my word. Most of Renee's mutterings were incoherent, but there was no doubt that they were all about Bella. All except for one about Carlyle, which I did my best to politely ignore. During the night, Alice brought me another tray with a dirty bowl and an empty orange juice box. She smiled as she set it beside me and I eyed her curiously. I saw Renee asking you if you wanted to join her for breakfast and while I'm sure you'd appreciate the gesture. I didn't think you would want to leave Bella. Or try to explain why you weren't eating. In the morning, Renee stretched and let her eyes adjust. Then her gaze fixed on the empty tray and with a sigh, excused herself to get a bite to eat. I could see the stress was getting to her and I was glad to see she was at least attempting to take care of herself. She hadn't eaten since she'd arrived. How are you? Carlyle thought, entering the room as soon as Renee left. Wordlessly I shrugged as my eyes drifted once more to Bella. Alice wanted me to tell you she sees Bella waking up soon. Instantly I moved my chair until I was pressed into the side of her bed. I bent down until my face was touching her pillow, watching her closely and hoping selfishly that she would awaken before her mother returned. I needed a moment with her. To see for myself she was all right and to determine whether or not she could ever forgive me for all the damage I'd caused. 
I was so torn, both desperate for her forgiveness but also knowing it would be easier if she demanded I leave. I didn't know if I would have the strength to do it on my own. And Edward. She wouldn't explain what she meant, but Alice also wanted me to tell you, don't try to make her choices for her. If you upset her at all, I'll come throw you out a window. I smirked at Carlyle and he just grinned. Her words, not mine, though I have to say I'm in agreement. I'll do my best. I said sarcastically as he turned to leave the room. In the minutes that followed, I allowed myself to think about the implications of Alice's warning. She knew I felt guilty and would blame myself for what had happened. Perhaps she had already seen me leaving and was telling me how wrong that decision would be if I were to force it upon Bella. Feeling a slight reprieve, I decided I would do my best to ensure Bella made up her own mind. For all I knew, she wouldn't want anything to do with me when she woke up and realized. 159, just how much damage I'd caused. Until that moment came, however. I would cherish every second I had with her. Yet again. Alice didn't fail me. Within a few minutes Bella's heart rate started to speed up slightly. She took several long, deep breaths until finally her eyes fluttered open. I didn't make any motion to move, letting her adjust to her unfamiliar surroundings, but when she reached up to pull the oxygen from her nose, I gently stopped her. No you don't, I said softly. Edward, she muttered, turning her head slowly until her eyes were locked with mine. They were still half-closed and straining to focus, but as they adjusted they widened in surprise and she shouted. Oh, Edward. I'm so sorry, shish, I whispered, wondering what in the world she could be apologizing for. Everything's all right now, what happened? She asked, confusion written all over her face. I wondered how much she remembered, and if remarkably she had managed to block out a significant portion of the events, how much I should even tell her. She'd handled the situation with so much grace, but now that she was safe and James was dead the reality of the fact that she'd been bitten by a vampire, knowing she'd nearly lost either her life or her humanity, would surely haunt her forever. I was almost too late. I could have been too late. I said quietly, deciding to skip to the only part that really mattered at that moment. It was the truth that I feared would forever change the way Bella saw me. I was so stupid. Edward. I thought he had my mom. She said, and I cringed as she once again found a way to blame herself. He tricked all of us. I assured her. I need to call Charlie and my mom. She said, her heartbeat racing with worry. Alice called them. Renee is here well, here in the hospital. She's getting something to eat right now. Again feeling miserably selfish. I hoped the cafeteria line was really long. I needed this time with Bella, she's here. She asked, making a feeble attempt to sit up. I noticed her pupils dilate slightly and I knew how dizzy such a sudden movement would make her. Carefully I guided her back to her pillow. She'll be back soon. And you need to stay still, but what did you tell her? She asked, looking slightly irritated. Was I already do exactly what Alice had told me not to do? Certainly looking out for her physical well-being didn't fall into the category of making choices for her. She was disoriented and lightheaded. I was simply making sure she didn't pass out. Why did you tell her I'm here? She persisted. You fell down two flights of stairs and through a window. I said, hoping she wouldn't be too offended by the fact that we had used her natural lack of balance to create a plausible story. You have to admit, it could happen. I teased, trying to get a smile from her. Instead all I got was a sigh, and a concerned expression as she started scanning her body for damage. How bad am I? I took a deep breath and prepared myself to say the words as objectively as I could manage. You have a broken leg, four broken ribs, some cracks in your skull, bruises covering every inch. 160, of your skin, and you've lost a lot of blood. They gave you a few transfusions. I didn't like it it made you smell all wrong for a while, that must have been a nice change for you, no. I like how you smell. I said sincerely. Didn't she understand yet that any pain being with her might cause me I considered a small price to pay. There was nothing I wouldn't withstand for Bella. Loving her, knowing she loved me, was worth any torture this world could put upon me. How did you do it? She asked, breaking me from my thoughts. She was staring at me with a look of such wonder in her eyes. And in that moment I knew she remembered every detail about the event that had almost changed everything. Unfortunately I was sure that meant she remembered the pain as well. 
I was foolish to think a little head injury could erase the memory of vampire venom in her veins, even if it had only been there for a few minutes. I'm not sure. I finally admitted, unsure of what else I could say. Honestly I was baffled myself, grateful but completely at a loss. Though I'd been momentarily overtaken by the powerful rush of finally tasting her, as soon as I heard her agonized screams all I could think about was saving her. I took her bandaged hand in mine and held it softly, staring at the place where the wound was hidden beneath a layer of gauze. She would have that scar forever and every time I looked at it I would be reminded of two things. I would always remember that because of my carelessness. Bella had suffered more than anyone should ever have to. However I would also remember that our love had been enough to keep me strong, and that I had saved her life when my very nature was fighting against me. It was impossible. To stop. I said sadly. Impossible. But I did. I met her eyes once more and tried to smile through the guilt I couldn't fully put aside. I must love you, don't I taste as good as I smell? She asked in the most adorably teasing voice. I would have enjoyed the gesture more had I not seen the way her face contorted in pain as she grinned. Even better better than I'd imagined. I groaned, as fire ripped through my throat at the memory. I welcomed it. It reminded me what I had accomplished, and of the sheer force of my love for her. I'm sorry. She whispered, and I rolled my eyes. Of all the things to apologize for. I said, exasperated by her constant need to blame herself for everything. What should I apologize for? She asked relentlessly, knowing she wouldn't let it go without my giving her some sort of answer. I came up with the only thing I could ever imagine accepting an apology for. For very nearly taking yourself away from me forever. I'm sorry. She said. Good. Now that was out of the way. I know why you did it. I said gently, wanting her to know I wasn't mad at her for making the decision she did. Her intense love for her mother had driven her to give up everything in order to keep Renee safe. I couldn't blame her for that. In fact now that I had her safely beside me. I realized her choice had made me love her even more. Self-sacrificing to a fault. She had an unending capacity to love. It was still irrational, of course. I continued, wanting her to understand that the only part of her choice I couldn't come to terms with with was that she hadn't trusted in me enough. You should have waited for me, you should have told me, 161. You wouldn't have let me go. No I wouldn't, I admitted. I watched her expression closely and her eyes seemed to glaze over. After a few moments of silence, her whole body shook. I felt my fists clench. Bella, what's wrong? I asked nervously. They were supposed to be monitoring her medication. She wasn't supposed to be in pain now. What happened to James, I relaxed slightly, realizing it was probably just a manifestation of something resembling post-traumatic stress. Bella would probably shake from her memories for quite some time. I hoped she didn't talk about it too much in her sleep with Renee around. That would make for quite an interesting conversation and I wasn't sure Bella was up for that amount of creativity. After I pulled him off you. Emmett and Jasper took care of him. I said dryly. I know revenge is an ugly monster all its own, but a part of me would always wish I had been the one to finish him off. I didn't see Emmett and Jasper there. She said, confused. They had to leave the room. I hesitated. There was a lot of blood, but you stayed. Her eyes suddenly filled with all the love and compassion I'd been so desperately needing to see. I wasn't worthy of any of it, but I needed it like humans needed air. It was the only thing sustaining me. Yes. I stayed. I answered simply. Trying to convey all my love for her through my eyes the way she had just done for me and Alice, and Carlyle, she trailed off, not understanding how deeply they all cared for her. They love you, too, you know. Her brow suddenly pulled together and nervously she asked. Did Alice see the tape, yes, I said coldly, recalling her bitter tone as she described the harsh truths of her human life. She was always in the dark. That's why she didn't remember, I know. She understands now. My hatred of James was momentarily overshadowed by hatred for the humans who had so callously thrown Alice away because of her gift. They'd feared her or been ashamed of her, and she'd been made to suffer for the talent we were now all so grateful for. Alice had been punished for the very thing that had ended up saving Bella's life. And I simply couldn't reconcile that. 
Uh, I heard Bella groan and I glanced down to see her attempting to lift her hand to me, but she was stopped by the carefully placed IV, what is it, needles, she said, staring at the ceiling as her breathing accelerated. Afraid of a needle. I mumbled. She was still always afraid of the wrong things. Oh, a sadistic vampire, intent on torturing her to death, sure. No problem, she runs off to meet him. An IV, on the other hand, why are you here? She asked, stopping my babbling with a jolt I wasn't ready for. She'd seemed so thankful, so glad to have me at her side. Perhaps I'd deceived myself into thinking I was forgiven. Of course I knew it made more sense that she would want nothing to do with me. 162, now that the threat was gone. She'd escaped death once, why would she stay with me and invite more danger into her life? This was the moment I had been waiting for, the truth I both feared and needed. It was smarter, safer for me to walk away. I just didn't know if I had to ability to exist without her love anymore. I braced myself for her reaction, and miserably I finally asked. Do you want me to leave? No she yelled, her face instantly distraught. I was confused but relieved as she continued. No I meant, why does my mother think you're here? I need to have my story straight before she gets back, oh, I sighed, loosening my grip on the sheet I hadn't realized I was holding onto. It collapsed in a crumpled mess at her side. I came to Phoenix to talk some sense into you, to convince you to come back to Forks, I said plainly, the words perfectly memorized and rehearsed. You agreed to see me, and you drove out to the hotel where I was staying with Carlisle and Alice of course I was here with parental supervision. I added with a smirk. Alice had come up with that part. She assured me that on top of explaining hers and Carlyle's presence, it would help get me back on Renee and Charlie's good sides. She also informed me I was going to need all the help I could get in that department. But you tripped on the stairs on the way to my room and, well, you know the rest. I finished. You don't need to remember any details, though, you have a good excuse to be a little muddled about the finer points, there are a few flaws with that story. She said after contemplating it briefly. Like no broken windows, not really. I sighed, thinking of the lengths Alice had gone to ensure the story was believable. I think it was a rather cathartic experience for her after the ordeal with James and the tape. The bitterness had passed quickly and she was as chipper as ever. Nothing flinging herself down a couple flights of stairs and through a window couldn't fix. Alice had a little bit too much fun fabricating evidence. It's all been taken care of very convincingly you could probably sue the hotel as you wanted to. You have nothing to worry about. I murmured, grazing my fingertips across her soft cheek. Your only job now is to heal, I grinned as the heart monitor began beeping wildly, amplifying the sounds of her increased heartbeat which I was already reveling in. That's going to be embarrassing. She said, blushing wildly. I laughed, feeling more light-hearted than I had in days, comforted by the fact that Bella still seemed to want me close even after all I'd put her through. It made me want to touch her more, hold her, kiss her. Hmm. I wonder. I said with a smirk, and carefully leaned toward her. I smiled, listening to her heart race as I closed the small distance between us. Softly I let my lips brush against hers. I couldn't believe how much I'd missed the feeling. I'd barely begun the kiss when I heard her heart stop and I immediately pulled away to see what I'd done wrong. As she stared at me wide-eyed, her heart returned to normal and I sighed in relief. Well one thing hadn't changed. She still had the most absurd reactions to my kisses. It seems that I'm going to have to be even more careful with you than usual. I said sadly, wishing that for once we could just be together like a normal couple. Was it too much to ask to be able to kiss the woman I loved with making her heart stop or having her faint or attack me? Although I might not complain about that particular response right now. After all, I was much more practiced in my control than I'd been that first time. 163, I was not finished kissing you. Bella said, and I realized I was staring at her lips with probably a bit too much longing. Don't make me come over there. Apparently that was all the encouragement I needed. Without a moment's hesitation I swooped down to kiss her once more, and thrilled to the way I made her heart race. Hospital food. Tubes. Broken everything. Crowded. Cullen. Renee's broken thoughts were getting closer, so reluctantly I ended our kiss. I think I hear your mother. I said, grinning at how disappointed Bella looked when I pulled away. Don't leave me. She said frantically. I won't, I assured her. 
I wasn't going anywhere. I'll take a nap. I said innocently. Deciding the whole charade might look more believable if I were lying down. I opted to move to the recliner. I didn't take my eyes off of Bella who was still breathing harder than normal, her cheeks and lips having significantly more color in them than when Renee had left. I leaned back and closed my eyes, fighting the smile that played at my lips as I wondered whether or not Renee would know I'd been kissing her daughter in between naps, don't forget to breathe. Bella whispered and I took one slow breath for show. Renee was right outside the door, and I was surprised to hear that she was talking with Carlisle. She was trying to direct the conversation toward myself and what exactly my relationship with Bella was, but Carlisle was keeping her focused on the accident and Bella's recovery. His calm assurances seemed to pacify her, at least for the moment. I'd have to thank him for that later. Eventually the door creaked open and, keeping up the facade that I was sleeping, Bella whispered very softly. Mom, I didn't risk opening my eyes but I could tell Renee was watching me. Persistent.be careful.nicest family. He never leaves, does he? She muttered, sounding both irritated and in awe. She seemed to be somewhere in between cautious and accepting, but she wasn't kicking me out of the room which was more than I had hoped for. Mom, I'm so glad to see you. Bella said, still quiet but clearly excited. Bella. I was so upset, I'm sorry. Mom. But everything's fine now. It's okay, I'm just glad to finally see your eyes open. She said, her voice cracking slightly. I could tell she was on the verge of tears again. How long have they been closed? Bella asked nervously. It was a subject I'd been purposefully avoiding. It's Friday, hun. You've been out for a while. Friday, they had to keep you sedated for a while, honey you've got a lot of injuries. I was suddenly glad that it had taken Renee so long to get to the hospital. Not just because I wanted to be the one to wait by Bella's side, but because I could only imagine how hard it must be for a mother to sit helplessly and watch her only daughter lie motionless and hooked up to countless monitors. I know, Bella said, and I could almost feel her wince. 164, your lucky Dr. Cullen was there. He's such a nice man. Very young, though. And he looks more like a model than a doctor, you met Carlisle, she asked, probably surprised that my family was still here. No matter how many times I said it, she simply wouldn't believe how important she was to them. And Edward's sister Alice. She's a lovely girl. She is, there was a slight pause and I tried to listen to Renee, but her thoughts were too scattered to pick out anything distinctly. You didn't tell me you had such good friends in Forks, she finally said. I didn't need to be a mind reader to know that the comment was directed at me. Clearly Bella had either failed to mention my existence at all to her mother, or at the very least had downplayed our relationship. I guess it shouldn't surprise me. I had been taking up a great deal of her time lately. And even if Renee knew about me, how many details could Bella really offer her? Hey mom. I'm in love with a vampire. Isn't exactly acceptable conversation. Bella made a pained sound and without thinking my eyes flew open so I could make sure she was okay. What hurts? Renee asked worriedly. It's fine. She said, throwing me a quick but meaningful glance before looking back to her mother. I just have to remember not to move. Where's Phil? She added, as eager as I was to get the attention off of me. Florida oh. Bella. You'll never guess. Renee said, her voice jubilant. Just when we were about to leave, the best news, Phil got signed. Bella asked, obviously proud of her stepfather, yes. How did you guess? The sons, can you believe it, that's great. Mom, she said, and I wondered if she even knew who the sons were. And you'll like Jacksonville so much. She continued and I felt my chest tighten. Renee assumed Bella would go home with her when she was well enough. Bella and I had barely had any time to talk and already I could feel her slipping away. Obviously it was the smartest choice and the safest for Bella, but I wasn't ready to say goodbye. I listened half-heartedly as Renee described how wonderful their new house was, and how happy Bella would be in the sun and the warmth. A part of me wanted to open my eyes to read her expression, but I was honestly too afraid to look. I didn't think I could bear to see the excitement that must be in her eyes at the prospect of being with her mother again. Now that she and Phil were settled. There was no reason for her to banish herself to the rain and the gloom of forks. There was no reason to continue putting herself in constant danger by remaining a part of my world. Though we all desperately wanted to keep her there. 
The only thing that mattered was that she would be happy now. She would be safe. Always, wait. Mom, Bella shrieked, graciously stopping my train of thought. I tried to smooth out the expression on my face, but I was sure if Bella looked at me she would see nothing but misery. I couldn't figure out how to let her go, yet I knew I was going to have to try. What are you talking about? Bella asked, sounding almost irritated. I'm not going to Florida. I live in Forks, 165. But you don't have to anymore, silly. Renee said with an easy laugh. Phil will be able to be around so much more now, we've talked about it a lot, and what I'm going to do is trade off on the away games, half the time with you, half the time with him, my fists clenched with every passing second. It all made sense. Renee knew it. I knew it. It wouldn't take Bella long to figure it out. I began working hard, trying to convince myself it was for the best. Mom, Bella said, her voice almost a whisper again. I held my breath, clinging to her every word as my own conflicted thoughts warred against each other. I want to live in Forks. I'm already settled in at school, and I have a couple of girlfriends. She trailed off, and I heard her heart speed up just a little. I could almost feel her desire to look at me, and I fought against my own urge to look at her. As much as I wanted her with me always, a part of me was expecting her to be looking for an excuse to run away. I deserved nothing less than her total desertion, and Renee was offering her the life she truly wanted. With her mother, away from the dreary rain-soaked town she hated, and above all safe. Away from me and the ridiculous existence I'd been trying to make her a part of. And Charlie needs me. She continued. He's just all alone up there, and he can't cook at all. You want to stay in Forks, Renee asked. Boys.life decisions.17, why, I told you school. Charlie ouch, again my eyes flew open, hoping Bella would give me some assurance she was okay like before, but this time she was staring only at her mother. Renee tenderly stroked her forehead and I could feel the concern and love radiating from her. Bella, honey, you hate forks, she said softly. It's not so bad, there was a long pause and a string of racing thoughts, until finally she asked. Is it this boy, he's part of it? Bella said sheepishly. So, have you had a chance to talk with Edward, yes, she said. Pausing. Brace yourself. I thought, hoping Renee didn't hate me as much as she had every right to. And I want to talk to you about that. She continued slowly. What about? Bella said. Trying to sound casual, but her heart rate gave her away. And thanks to the monitor. Not just to me anymore. I think that boy is in love with you. She whispered and I almost laughed at the way she said it. As if it was a secret and Bella was finding out for the first time. I think so, too. Bella whispered in return and I nearly chuckled. And how do you feel about him? She urged. Suddenly I wasn't listening to Bella and her mother have a very awkward conversation about me. I was listening to a schoolgirl, informing her friend that some boy had a crush on her and wondering if she liked him back. I was the boy. And I was really, really enjoying myself. After a long sigh in which I could almost see Bella rolling her eyes, she admitted. I'm pretty crazy about him. It was quite possibly the cutest thing she'd ever said. 166, well, he seems very nice, and, my goodness. He's incredibly good looking, she said. Her thoughts drifting back to Carlisle. Yes, apparently I inherited my looks from my adoptive, vampire father. But you're so young. Bella, I know that. Mom, don't worry about it. It's just a crush. I knew she was just trying to placate her mother, but I cringed a bit at the term crush, that's right. Renee sighed, the word obviously serving its purpose and calming her fears that her little girl wasn't desperately in love and throwing her life away. Do you need to go? Bella asked after a long pause. Phil's supposed to call in a little while, I didn't know you were going to wake up, no problem. Mom, Bella said a little too hastily. I suppressed a smile at the notion that she was anxious for me to be back beside her. I won't be alone, I'll be back soon. She promised. I've been sleeping here. You know. I wasn't sure why, but it sounded like Renee was trying to prove herself. I hoped my being there wasn't making her feel badly. Since she'd arrived she'd been at Bella's side almost as much as I had, the only different being that she had to occasionally eat while I only had to appear as if I had. Oh, mom, you don't have to do that. You can sleep at home I'll never notice, I was too nervous. There's been some crime in the neighborhood, and I don't like being there alone, crime, Bella asked. 